Hi everyone, welcome back to the D3 use case series. Today, we're focusing on security event handling and SIM more specifically. D3 integrates with many SIMs, for example, Logarithm, Chronicle, McAfee, Microsoft Sentinel, Splunk, QRadar, ArcSight, and Datadog's new security monitoring product. We have a lot of experience working with SIM technologies and creating playbooks and automations for the SOC analysts. We're also well aware of the challenges SOC analysts face. Most of the time, SIM events require contextualization to determine their validity and criticality. You may need to query for additional information or copy and paste threat intelligence from other tools into a case repository. Too many mundane tasks taking too much time and giving the adversaries an advantage. Manual processing can also bring in human error and analyst bur burnout which can result in poor decision making. Without great playbooks and automation, operating a SIM can be a grind, and nobody wants that. Lastly, due to the sheer volume of events, the vast majority go uninvestigated. For a risk-averse organization, this should be a red flag. So many security incidents and breaches begin with mundane events that were simply missed or ignored. D3 solution helps you validate threats automatically which takes the burden off your analysts. With D3 automating the MITRE ATT&CK TTP correlations, you can see the bigger picture beyond individual threats. Let's move on to a sample playbook. In this example, we're ingesting from SIM, extracting and enriching the indicators of compromise, all automatically. We can do this using any of your internal or global sources of threat intelligence. The playbook also gathers file hashes and automates the sandboxing process. With all this enrichment data appearing in the incident record, the analyst can quickly determine whether the event is malicious or not. Assuming the incident is convicted, the playbook then updates watch lists and threat intelligence and triggers whatever remediation steps are required. Let's jump into the platform and see a specific example. Today we're going to look at the event space within the D3 SOAR platform. The event space is made up of this particular area here, underneath the dashboard area in the main D3 platform. Uh, events are generally generated from ingested security alerts that are coming either from an email system or a SIM system or some type of an EDR or other centrally uh, centralized area for security alerting. So within the D3 space, alerts can come in in various forms and with various data points within, within the system. If I go in and I want to go and investigate one of these alerts, I have a number of piece, places where I've got different pieces of information. So event summary gives me the initial summary, the event type that has been, that's been mapped into the tool set itself, and then any additional event details that may be included in that particular in that particular event uh, the events will differ depending on the, the type of alert and the alerting tool that that it may have come from artifact behavior allows me to take a look at the different pieces of that particular uh, alert or event in the system and actually take a look to see if there's any any type of intelligence that's been gathered in the system as well as what's made up that particular alert in the in, in the system Event log is the general snapshot of the actual event that may have come in to the system itself. If I want to investigate this or escalate it because something uh, something stood out or it needs to go through another process, I can hit the escalate button here. Escalate button gives me the ability to do a number of different options. One is I can choose the type of event or of incident that I want to be able to use along with choosing a playbook for that particular um, incident that I want to escalate into. Uh, playbooks can either be uh, defaulted to on a particular type, or they can be chosen manually with this drop-down button here. Severity can also be chosen for what, what I want to escalate it into, as well as putting a title in here for what I may want to title it, along with the description. Uh, there's additional settings down here. So if I want to select an additional file upload, if I want to change the site location, 
to where it may, may go. And if I want to put a due date on for when this needs to be handled, I can do that here as well. Searching for relative incidences in the system allows me to go and take a look to see if there's any related alerts or events that are based on certain search criteria up top here. This allows me to go and take other areas, if, if needed, and actually attach them into the system. And that way I can deal with multiple events in a singular go, rather than having to deal with each particular event on an individual basis. And again, you'll notice here that this is now the same side area for additional options for, for escalating it into that, particular, into that particular area. Choosing the Escalate button here allows me to go and escalate it and produce a security incident number off that particular item there. Going into this particular number will push me from the events area here into the incident area to actually further handle the investigation for what may need to for what may may need to may need to may need to be done on that particular item. A few other notes here in regards to um, the event space. One is you'll notice there's different categorizations of areas here. For example, investigated by me would contain any of the items that would have been assigned um, as an investigated item into the system. So in other words, if I come in here and I hit and simply hit investigate, that's going to pull it into pull it into my queue. You'll notice here that it's set as admin user in that particular item. Investigated by others is um, indicated by maybe others that are on the team. Dismissed items are all those items that may, be, may have been dismissed in the actual queue itself. So this could be anything that, that um, was rejected as, as a null event in the system. All escalated items are those that are escalated up that have a current um, incident number and that are currently under investigation in the incidents area. All events would, be, would contain all open and closed items and uploaded is any item that would be manually uploaded as an item into the into the system that didn't come from an automated space. Again, going back into the all open area here, the dashboard has a number of pieces of functionality. I can group by different items. So if I want to group by event type, I can go and group by an event type and then filter and sort by different different styles of different styles of events. I can also then go ahead and group them. By subgroup, maybe I want to look at the site that it's under. So I can do multiple groupings and then look at the different sites for what items may, be, may belong to certain uh, sites or bucket locations. Again, each particular area also has a filtering capability. And depending on the, on the, on the type of column it is, we'll have different filtering options. Such as something like risk level, we'll have a few options that I can actually filter on. So maybe I want to look at just highs and mediums. I can go ahead and filter this, and that's going to produce a certain amount of filtering. Anytime I want to look if I've got any active filtering or clear the filtering, I can go, I can go here. This will also tell me if I've got any additional um, column sorting that's going on as well. Let's go ahead and hit clear and clear all my filtering. On my refresh button, I also have the ability to choose what columns I want to show. So if there's certain columns that I'm not using, I can actually go and remove them from any type of any type of, of a list within the, within the system. Print allows me to export off the list of events in this particular area or chosen area. And I can see here I've got uploading as well as saving a certain triage item within within the system for events that I may have triaged already. As another note here, you'll notice I have a site dropdown. Depending on if I have access to multiple locations or multiple sites, I may have the I may have the dropdown capability to go into one or the other site or have it globally set to look at all of my various sites. A site can be considered a bucket or a segregation of data by department or uh, by client if depending if it's a, if it's an MSSP or not. I also have a search capability up here to search for the last month. This time frame can also be changed and adjusted to be longer than one month. I can go up to about three years in terms of a search capability here as well.